Rosie and her family have established the first charity in the UK dedicated to raising awareness and promoting research into intestinal pseudo-obstruction. They have named the charity GI Blues. Today is their first public event. If it takes just a little while I know you don't believe in it too I'm living in it anyhow Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever GI Blues Awareness Day. I'd just like to welcome you and say first of all that I hope you have a fantastic day and thank you for supporting the cause. Uh, GI Blues is a charity set up by myself and my family to raise awareness for the condition. There are not many sufferers in the UK, so people don't know much about it, so this event's really going to help. So, have a good day, and I hope you enjoy yourself. GI Blues has been in the making for about three years. When I was first diagnosed I kind of decided that I wanted to do something to make people more aware of the condition and it was only last year we thought up the name, tried to get trustees together and everything and then this March um, it just all came about, became a registered charity and started planning this event. This is the first one for GI Blues. Um, we've done small things like family and friends kind of because you can't get public donations if you're not registered so it's just been family donations and stuff so we did posh frock and black tie do's and just things like that really. First of all it was a website wasn't it last year in October that was the very first um, thing that she set up and then with her dad and some of the other people she wanted to get the charity going so all together it's taken what, six to eight months yeah, that it was to get it actually registered. GI Blues um, was thought up because GI stands for gastrointestinal and the illness kind of brings you down sometimes. So we just thought that it was an appropriate name. Um, Dad was the first person to come up with it and we had a few names written down but this was best suited to the charity. But the raising of the money is going to be the main thing to, and telling everybody about Rosie's illness, the pseudo obstruction and her psychical vomiting and how she's been through many traumas with people and their attitudes to everything, um, including medical staff not knowing all about it. That's why she wanted the charity so we can do booklets and promotional uh, events like today's picnic in the park. So. The more we do and the more funds we get, the bigger and the better and hopefully next year the event will be much, much bigger than this one. The, 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 the problem is really that this is such a rare condition but there's only a handful of people in the UK every year who are diagnosed with having so, so the real challenge for us is to build awareness. And if we get 10 people who know more about it and then they each go and tell another 10 people so if we have a hundred people today, then they go and tell ten people each as a thousand, and then they go and tell ten people each. So let's try, try to get a multiplier effect. But awareness is the key issue for us. It's not about raising money in itself, it's about raising money so that we can increase awareness of the condition. Because if only half a dozen people a year are diagnosed with this condition, you can bet your bottom dollar. But there are a lot more people out there who've got this, who just haven't been diagnosed yet. GI Blues kind of like is something that has to be done because there is not enough media coverage, there's not enough awareness and I think the reason for that is because the condition is so, it's not known at all and even the medical profession are unaware of it 
and it's only up in London really um, that's the only place that has specialist gastro units so they're the only people who have ever heard of the condition really. It was suggested to us that there's so little is known about it because it really only affects children and any money that goes into medical research these days comes from drugs companies. And if it only affects children and it's life limiting then there's no mileage in it for the drugs companies to invest mega bucks in producing solutions to the problem. That's the silly thing. Events like this are just, as well as helping people and making people aware, it's just about having fun as well, so it gives me something to do. Um, obviously being sick every day and not being able to get out and see what I can do, um, it is hard to kind of put everything together, but at the same time it's just, it is hard work but it's really good fun as well. It's very hard to involve her when she's actually too ill to be involved and we've had to go ahead and do things even without her knowing, we've just gone and done it and, and she finds that most frustrating. Um, but it, it is teamwork down in the long run and we know it's her little, it's her thing, it's what she's wanted to do and Mike's the chairman so he's the one that will do the main planning and then we tell her what we're doing, what needs to be done and as much as she can do she will do but it's really hard for her. But we actually involve her in the charity so, so she, goes she, she to the comes meeting. off the trustee meeting and then she can comment on what we're discussing and give her so, so she does have quite a lot of effects on the actual charity. I think having the condition myself, it makes me more determined to do things for not even if it's not for in this time with my friends and helping them and helping find a cure for them. In ten years' time, people are going to be more aware, and it's nice to know that I could have played a part in that. Too often you come across people who, 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 who think that because they don't know about a condition, it doesn't exist. And we're still in a situation where too many medical professionals are the men in white coats. And too many people who are, too many lay people um, are still in awe of medical professionals. No one chose it the same. Now the internet's helping to do that because it's opened up medical science to a lot more people. But there are still people who are afraid to actually tackle medical professionals head on and say, oh, hold on, hold a second opinion. Hold on, I've read this, you know, this, I, I think that this is my, this is my job and I think that this could be wrong. What are you going to do about it? But you still find too many medical professionals at all levels, from, from nurses and healthcare auxiliaries up to consultants who refuse to accept that something exists because they don't know about it. And that is what we have to change. That's where we have to increase it. I know a lot of people as they get older do tend to get more depressed about their illnesses, whatever it is. Um, she's a very strong-willed character and um, with this she'll push it. She won't let it go. Although her condition has limited Rosie's ability to make new friends and meet people her own age who are not pseudo-obstruction sufferers, Rosie is currently in a relationship with 18-year-old Jake Cornell. Jake does not suffer from pseudo-obstruction but has learnt about the condition from his relationship with Rosie. Through Jake, Rosie gains back some of the normality of life her condition has taken from her. Well, first of all, I kind of like, I don't know if you've heard of MySpace, but it's like a place on the internet where you reunite with friends or meet new people or whatever. And um, basically, I thought Jake was someone from my primary school and it turned out he wasn't, but we just got talking and then after that we kind of became friends and then it just progressed from there. I explained to Jake about my condition before we got together. Um, when I first started talking to him on MySpace, it was just kind of like, I've always been really open about it, and I just tell someone straight away, and if they can't accept it, then they can't accept it. But I was lucky that Jake just was really understanding about it, and I was just kind of explained everything, and it, I think it was more of a shock, like, when we were a few weeks into the relationship, when I was rushed into hospital, and um, that's when he realised that it was kind of quite serious, wasn't it? Yeah. So, 
but yeah. I came to visit you and... Yeah, came to visit me when I was carrying a pot of wee to the nurse, <laughs> dropping it on the floor. That was really good, wasn't it? Yeah. No, but it was kind of... It was scary telling someone at first, because, like, I didn't know if I'd see Jake again or speak to him as much or be as close as we were or start a relationship with him. So I just told him outright, like I do with most people. We're really pleased that he's taken an interest and stayed by our side yeah. throughout. For somebody who hates hospitals and medical things, I think he's done really, really well. Yeah. And it, can't, yeah. it can't be easy for an 18 year old lad to, to sort of um, to come to terms with that. And she has deteriorated since we yeah. first met her, yeah. and they've been apart with him in hospital in London. And uh, he's, he's good for her. Yeah. Good for her. Maybe she's maybe she's not too bad for him either. <laughs> Apparently not. It can't it can't be easy. Uh, I get that. You know, you, you had, that that sort of um, long term medical condition would have an impact on any relationship. Well, I was surprised because I never heard of it before, so I didn't know what to expect if I met Rosie or once we got into a relationship. But she told me outright everything that had happened to her, everything that she'd been through, so I knew what to expect when I uh, met Rosie. Um, I didn't know she'd be in hospital quite so much, but luckily enough she hasn't been in too much lately. Well, if she's up in London, then it affects the relationship because I don't get to see her as much. And um, if she, she's most, uh, the longest she's been up there is for... Like two and a half weeks. With... Two and a half weeks up in London. But she's been into Eastbourne a couple of times as well. And But it does affect the relationship because we don't get to see each, each other as much. You can never tell, can you? You can never tell what what what, what, what would have been, what might have been. But it? she's definitely what missed missed uh, a lot of opportunities, a lot of things that other kids would have done. Um, Going be... on holidays with your mates, on school trips, and things like that, she's missed out on, and or um, going on your school prom. He says it's gonna be a stick by me, whatever happens. But what if one day it all gets too much? Everyone tells me I can't think like that, but I've got to at times, I've got to think. Because I've got to tell him when new things happen, I've got to tell him that he can walk whenever he wants to walk. And that is the hardest thing. The hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Tell someone that they can walk away at any moment. But that's the reason. Because I love him, I have to let him go if he needs to go. Deal with it. It's like he's going to have to deal with hearing me scream and scream and scream up to the end of this because I'm in so much pain. I don't know why it affects me the way it does, but it just makes me so sick. Literally, I'm vomiting more than usual. I cannot move. I was supposed to hold the enema in for 20 minutes. I can only manage four, so it isn't as effective as it could be.